Okay, so now that we've talked about how to make video, how to get video to students, how we can add interaction to video, and how video is just as much about relationship building in the classroom as anywhere else. Because again, if we just give video to students, say, there you go, and don't ask anything in return from them, or we never follow it up, then we're not putting it to good use. But now, let's finish our discussion here by figuring out how in the world do I use video on this spectrum of digital classroom? Because the reality is, in this totally traditional classroom, the only time video happened was when somebody pushed play. All right? But over here in the full digital classroom, we're kind of limited that it's always being played. So here's the thing. Video is a tool just like everything else, and it can be used at any place on this spectrum. But the good news is we can use video that we've created to take that and turn it up or turn it down depending on what level of video is necessary for the learning. So let's just take a video. Let's assume it's an introduction video to the parts of a cell. Now, that video could be used almost everywhere on this spectrum. Now, obviously, in the full digital classroom, it's probably the very first introductory video on a whole series or a big doc or in a Google Classroom or on a slideshow of the whole unit on parts of the cell. So that's obvious where that goes. Over here in the totally traditional classroom, maybe it doesn't get used at all, or maybe it's something that everybody sits and watches in class for however many minutes, and then we have some sort of worksheet on it. Both of those things can be okay, but both of those things could be done better. Let's take that same video that is parts of a cell, and let's figure out where does it really fit. Well, if I'm in school, and I begin my year with students in a classroom like I'm used to, I still wouldn't probably have everybody in the class watch the video at the same time. Now, if I'm in a district where the only option is that one TV or that one projector that hooks up to the computer and I have to show it all at once because that's my limitations, then that's reasonable. But I think we could probably do better. Even in that digital classroom that where we're using some tech in the classroom, what I would probably do with that is I would either set it up as a center where a student may go for here's the structure of a cell versus another center for where do we find cells, what's their use and application. This other one where we're looking maybe at some cells through a microscope. Maybe it's one of a couple centers in that classroom. The advantage in this situation is students are active, students are engaged, but also students are only getting what they need when they need it. So for example, you don't have to look at the cell before you know what all the parts are. You could have that experience and then go figure out what all those parts that you just saw were. Or on the other hand, you could have the names of the parts and their graphical representations and then go try to spot them and play where's cell Waldo in the microscope, okay? All of these things can happen in different orders, but the video can now be on one laptop or one computer or one Chromebook and the student or group of students simply goes over, presses play and now they have exactly the information they need when they need it, and it's one station of many. Now let's do it a different way. Let's assume you're closer to the middle here, and students have ready access to Chromebooks or computers or their phones. Well now, maybe what we do is we take this one video, remember parts of a cell, same video, and we're gonna put it out to all the students on Google Classroom, in the slideshow, on Canvas or LMS or wherever we put it. And every student watches it with their headphones in. So now every student may have it at the same time, but every student has that opportunity to go back and rewatch something they didn't catch, to watch it at their own speed, 
or honestly, maybe to wait and watch it till they need it to do whatever task you've given them to do. But now every kid has it. It's not just at a station. All right, so let's move more to the center. Let's really go that kind of flip blended idea. In this case, that video is not in the classroom at all. That, cla that video was given to them in classroom or drive or LMS or wherever ahead of time. And they've already viewed that video before they came to class. And now they're ready to go to this station with the microscope or this station with a little test or this station about something else. They're already ready to go, and I haven't spent that class time that either was spent, everybody watching, or was spent even as one station among many. It's already active learning as soon as you walk in. Now you say, okay, okay, fine. That's in your great rainbows and unicorns world. What if that kid didn't watch it? That's easy. If the kid has the technology, it's already still in their inbox. You say, have you watched this? Where's your little, little ticket that shows me that you've watched it? Or I can see in my Edpuzzle data that you haven't watched it. Or in any other way that I've interacted with this data from the video, I can see that you're not ready. Or let's be honest, in most classrooms, I can look at you, my friend, and understand you're not ready. In that case, super easy. Hey, grab your headphones. Go over there, watch the five minute video, because remember our videos, five to eight minutes, and then come join the rest of us as we get going in this interaction. That student no longer is limiting the rest of the students. That student still gets the experience. Now they may not have as much time at these other great experiences, but that's either A, a choice that student made, or B, was a result of things outside that student's control, and that's where we as teachers need to have that two-way communication and relationship with a student to understand, say, hey, I get you didn't get it watched for today, but we're good. You're going to watch tonight and then tomorrow. You're good to go, right? Like, do you need help? Is there an extension? How can I assist you with this? That's an opportunity for an intervention, not an opportunity for discipline. But in either case, we can provide it in the classroom if absolutely necessary or we can simply be flexible and use this flexible medium to really help a kid. But in either case, that blended or flipped, having them done before the students arrive, I mean, interaction is right out of the gate. Now, let's go a little bit further. Let's go to that super digital classroom, not all the way to the end to the full digital. In this case, the student may have as part of their slideshow or part of their hyper doc or as part of their meta doc or part of their Google Classroom or part of their whatever, whatever framework is being used for this super techie classroom or this strong digital classroom, they already have that video, the activity that goes along with it, either the interaction instead of a worksheet that's built inside, because remember, instead of that worksheet maybe that everybody has to fill out while well, we watch it all in class together, Maybe you put the questions right inside the video, the video stops, the kid answers the question. Bam, worksheet done. Or better yet, there's no worksheet at all and the student is gonna create their reflection piece or their presentation or their assessment digitally because again, we're moving further forward on this spectrum that we can do that up here and that student has not just that video, but all the videos for cells. And now they already have all of that at their disposal. So if that one kid that came in a few minutes ago that wasn't prepared, if it wasn't a choice on their part, or it was some sort of extenuating circumstances, now that student gets to choose when they do each of these things. How much better is it to set up one microscope here, one dye test over here, another thing over here, and leave them up? for a while, as long as there's no safety concerns, rather than setting up 12 microscopes or 12 dye tests or whatever it is. When the student gets to it, the student can go do it, as long as it's within the ditches and the limitations that we as teachers set. That strong digital classroom provides crazy flexibility for teachers and students. So again, same video has been used all the way across here. 
It's just a matter of how do we choose to use it. Final thing, what happens if it's a Tuesday at one o'clock, principal comes on the intercom and says, teachers, students, please check your email. We're not going to be in school tomorrow because of biological reason, mechanical reason, weather reason, whatever the reason, students aren't going to be there. Now, what might have been this class activity here in stations, or that video you were going to watch together and fill out, the thing is, if the video is already there, and especially if those interaction components are already built into it, it can also just go home with them. Because now you went from this area of the spectrum and cranked it up, and you're at this area of the spectrum with no change to the resources that you've provided for students, and not a lot of change to the activities that you're gonna do for students. Say, whoa, 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 remember my microscope? Can't take my microscope home with my kids. Can't send it home. I agree with you. But remember our little endoscope? This fella here? Or remember our document camera right here? As a teacher who's going to do a lot of these things year in and year out or class after class, I already have a little video of what they're supposed to see through that microscope or what that thing is supposed to look like. Now, if they're in class, I want them to do it in class and get that real life hands on. But guess what? If they're not going to be in class for whatever reason, whether it's everybody out of class or whether it's that student out of class for a long term illness, or for a trip or whatever it is, I can now not only just have my video about parts of the cell, but I can also have the video from that station and it all goes right there together with them, either in a slideshow, a hyperdoc, a Google doc, a Google drive, that LMS, however framework you choose to put on it, it can all go together right there. So folks, video is not about replacing teaching. Video is about good teaching in a number of places. So we can take that one video, parts of a cell, put it here, 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 all the way over here, and we can use it in a variety of ways because now, instead of being limited by our choices, our choices become unlimited. So it allows us to take that classroom and turn it down digitally or up digitally, however we need to do it for kids. That's the advantage of good video in education. <laughs>